Hi, this is Svetlana from Come With Cosplay and today I will bring Revenant from Apex Legends to life. Yes, I'm finally doing something from Apex and I'm really excited. And actually, the devs just uploaded a bunch of really awesome and helpful cosplay guides of all the characters. And to celebrate that, they asked me to create the mask of Revenant. But I wanted to do more, just the mask. I wanted to become Revenant. So, in this video, you will see a really cool cosplay transformation and I really hope you will enjoy it. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Apex Legends is a free-to-play battle royale hero shooter and is available for PlayStation, PC and Xbox. In the game, Revenant is a playable character, originally known as the merciless assassin Caleb Cross, brought back to life from death with superhuman powers and a metal body. So, and now, do you want to see how I'm turning into a crazy, spooky killer robot? Well, then let's start crafting. So first, let's take a look at the Revenant cosplay guide. He has quite an extraordinary design and I really love the red, white and black combo. As I said though, we didn't have the time to create the full costume. So let's see how much of him we need to build for a cool cosplay transformation. Starting with the mask. First though, we had to do a 3D scan of my head. Benny used here the app EM3D and the selfie camera of his iPhone. By slowly walking around me, we got a fresh new head scan in about 2 minutes. That we then could export directly into Blender. Next, Benny placed some screenshots from the cosplay guide behind my head, scaled them properly and began sculpting the mask directly onto my digital face. Isn't technology just fascinating? Since I have no idea what he is doing though, let's hear it from him directly. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so if you have seen any of my other 3D modeling videos on YouTube, I think you already know what I'm doing here. I basically started with a single four point polygon and then extruded the edges to create more, closely following the shape of my reference images. The great thing about having a front and a side view is that you can constantly switch between the two sides and check if your shapes look all right. Complicated pieces like the Revenant mask always seem very intimidating at first, but if you just tackle them step by step, piece after piece, you can slowly build up the base shape, even if you don't have a lot of experience doing things like this. Also, if the reference has a lot of detail, it's important to break down the shapes as much as you can first and only then add the details back in later. The only thing we really struggled with here was adapting the shape of the mask in a way that a real human face would actually fit inside. We had to increase the size quite a bit and especially make the cheeks a lot wider. But I think in the finished video nobody will notice. Then after the rough shape was done, I applied a subdivision modifier which basically made everything much more smooth and selected a few edges that I wanted to stay sharp and not smooth. For this I went up here to mean crease and moved that number closer to 1. The same steps then got repeated for the rest of the mask and after I was satisfied with my progress I sent the mask to my brother Jacob who added all the final details in ZBrush. But yeah, these were basically all the steps we did to create a printable 3D model of the Revenant mask. And now back to Svetlana. Okie okay, dokie, okay. next up it was finally time to print the mask. To make slicing and painting easier, we actually separate the jaw from the top and also split the top of the mask in half. All in all, we printed for around two days using both of our Sawtrex M200 ABS machines. Even though the mask wasn't that large, 3D printing all parts still took a lot of time. Once released from the printing plate, the real fun could begin. Sanding. To make his life easier, Benny always goes over everything with an orbital sander first. Just look at those sexy sanding arms. After the first pass, it was time to glue the main parts together. He always uses ABS slushy as a glue, which is a mix of ABS leftovers and acetone, carefully applied it onto the edges and connected the top two pieces. To hide the seam, he then added spot putty with the strip of a playing card and once dry, sanded over all of it again with a sponge. Already looking good! For the fitting test, I grabbed some black curtain fabric, cut off a little bit and sewed it into a simple hood. 
First test with the mask looked pretty good. By the way, if you want to learn 3D modeling and printing yourself, go check out my book of 3D printing on kamuicosplay.com. It's super beginner friendly and full of helpful guides and tutorials to get started. So, you know, buy my books. So, time to paint it. To get it really shiny, Benny first applied a thick layer of spray primer and spent even more time sanding it. This step is super important as it hides all the remaining printing lines and provides a smooth base for the upcoming paint job. While the small eye socket were painted with spray paint, most of the mask was then using airbrush colors. Benny began with a base coat of the red jaw and then added some super fine shadows in a darker shade. It's really subtle as you can see. He also grabbed a super fine brush and added a few additional shadows into all the deepenings. Then some glossy spray varnish. The mask actually has quite a detailed paint job and Benny did his very best to recreate the look as closely as possible. The upper part of the face got a grayish base coat first. We actually have three of four different shades of every color because picking the right one is super important. It's not just about adding a few shadows here and there and Benny puts a lot of time and effort into truly being close to the reference. As you can see, he tried to recreate every single scratch on the mask, matched every color and luckily has incredibly steady hands to paint on all these fine details. I think in a different world, he might have become a surgeon and not a painter. Anyway, some varnish to protect his work and a few more details and the mask was finished. Time to glue everything together. If it really needs to stick, we like to use a strong two-part epoxy glue. You have to stir it first and apply generously, but after a few minutes of dry time, it holds for all eternity. The top piece was glued on with some more ABS though. Next for the glowing eyes. This is actually a tip we stole from Lightning Cosplay. A great way to get light up eyes that you can still see through is to laser engrave a transparent piece of plexiglass with little circles. Just had to heat shape the plexiglass and wire up some LED strips. I used an old circuit from some of my previous projects to light up everything. Now we only had to glue in the plexiglass to the eye sockets, add some hot glue and place the LED strip carefully all around the eyes. The result looked already pretty nice. Next on we connected the sockets and the mask, hot glued the wires in and added some foam padding. Ta-da! And for the final test. Nice! Works like a charm and the mask looks amazing. Just one more rubber band for more comfort and the black hoodie I already sewed before. And the mask was done. I really love how it turned out. So cute, right? To film a proper cosplay transformation though, I needed a bit more than just the mask. I needed at least the breastplate, shoulder guards and arms. If I would film mainly above my torso, nobody would know that nothing exists below my waistline, right? So let's make the breastplate and portraits next. Just like last time, Benny built me some rough foam patterns in Blender from scratch. It was kinda tricky to scale and shape these to fit my body, as I obviously had a little bit more volume than just a skeleton robot. But in the end, nobody will notice the changes anyway. Just as always, Benny made a paper pattern for me that I printed out and taped together. Since the armor was pretty large, I decided to use black low density foam for all pieces. If you're interested, I put a link to all the tools and materials we used in the video description. After cutting everything out and gluing all these pieces together one after the other, I got a really fancy robot breastplate. The same steps were also necessary for the shoulder armor. Tracing the patterns, cutting everything out and gluing all pieces including the thinner detail layers together with contact cement. I also wanted to add more details to the breastplate, so I grabbed additional 2mm high density EVA foam 
and began gluing them on layer after layer. As you can see, just by adding these few additional pieces, the result looked already far better and had more depth. To fix my breastplate from standing off, I also glued some additional strips of foam to the inside where they hold everything in place tightly. Much better. Now, instead of building the whole complicated backpack from Revenant, I actually just made two little wingies, smashed a few details on top and glued them to the back of my breastplate. I will just never turn around, so we will know, right? Well, now you know, I guess. Okay, next I started priming my armor pieces with a few layers of flex bond. You can actually change the color just by adding a bit of acrylic paint into it. For darker pieces, it's always nice to have a black base coat. Since flex bond is really sticky and shiny though, I also went over everything again with some black airbrush color. Then after spending way too many hours applying masking tape, I added a shiny silver layer and Benny added some darker shadows where it was needed. Next a layer of grey as a brighter base and a lot of red. Somehow getting rid of masking tape always goes so much quicker than applying it. But the result looked really nice. Benny just had to add a few last details with a brush as well as some fake paint chipping effects on my shoulder pieces. Very nice. Just some spray varnish to protect it all and the pauldrons and breastplate were finished. Looking good. I also glued some of my fabric to the edges to make the transition more smooth and attached the pauldrons to my breastplate using belts and velcro. So far so good. Now I had the breastplate and the shoulder guards. To be able to move in my video though, I would also need to cover my belly and my arms. So I decided to make the bags for this tummy area. These were really easy to do. Basically just a few square pieces that got pinned and sewn together around the edges. To fill them up, I stuffed them with a few pieces of foam and then just glued them to my breastplate with some more belts. Okay, very good. Exactly what I needed. Unfortunately, I was already running out of time for the arms. But what kind of a cosplayer would I be if I don't already have some robot arms laying around, right? I built these here years ago for a tutorial video on YouTube. So you know, just watch this one if you want to know how I made them. They fit perfectly to Revenant as well and I would move my hands pretty fast in the video anyway. So I guess nobody would notice that the hands were not really his. Also, to hide my throat, armpits and belly, I bought this really cheap Halloween catsuit at a local store for around 10 euros. And with this, I think I had everything I needed to film a really fancy cosplay transition. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So how do you like it? Pretty cool, right? Especially now that you know that I actually didn't build the rest of the costume, right? I think Benny did an amazing job editing this and adding effects to make it really stand out. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed the video and especially the final result. Like as mentioned, we did a little bit more than requested, even though it was not a full costume. Uh, Benny and I were still really proud of the result and I think it looks really cool. And I also hope that you learned one or two things from this video, like my favorite is actually the head scan because it's really, really useful and we constantly use it like for all kinds of masks and helmets and Benny also made a whole YouTube video about that as a tutorial just for you, completely for free. So check this out. Also, thanks a lot to Apex Legends for this really cool collaboration. I really appreciate that they support the cosplay community so much. Also, don't forget to check out the brand new cosplay guide. Link in the video description down below. Maybe you're also motivated to create a cosplay from Apex Legends yourself. 
And as always, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. We always are happy to help. And yeah, or let me know how you like the project. And if you don't know what to write, just write on Corgi and join the Corgi Squad. Support us with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much. Also, please like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And other than that, see you very soon in the next cosplay crafting video. Bye!